genetics. They did a study in Europe and they took 4,500 homozygote twins. Mm -hmm. And a homozygote twin is not a gay twin, just so you guys know. They are taken of the same egg and they took uh, the study with 4,500 of these um, uh, homozygous twins because they have the same genetics. And they followed them throughout their life and they looked to see if they could correlate their disease patterns. And what they found is while they lived together and they ate the same foods and they had the same family environment, they had the same um, exposure to waters and I mean, whatever you can imagine that they would be exposed to that would be similar growing up in the same household they were exposed to and their disease patterns mimicked almost exactly, almost 100%. One would get sick, the other one would get sick. One would develop diabetes, the other one would develop diabetes. One would get cancer, the other one would get cancer. Now a very interesting thing happened when they got to adulthood and they went and started to, um, you know, they get married and they went into separate households and they would live separate lives. They would start eating different foods and they would start, you know, they'd get married and they'd have different types of emotional or non emotional issues in their household and their work environment, yada, yada, yada. They found only a 12% correlation to the disease patterns in these twins. So that means is that leaves 88% that's under our control. And that's what I like to talk about. That's what you deal with, right? That 88%. So this is a, um, this is just showing here that cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States. This was as of 1992, this is an older stat. Of course, one of the reasons that skews this is once you get over 65, heart disease starts to play a much bigger role into the death, death rate. Mortality. Oops. Okay. Okay, this guy says, I think I found a cure for cancer. And cut off our funding? The hell you have. <laughs> definition of cancer is the uncontrolled growth of abnormal cells, period, stop. That's what cancer is. That's what we're dealing with. At any given moment, there's 75 million cancer cells that are inside of each one of your bodies. And it may be more or less depending on your immune system. And for all intents and purposes, your age as well. As we get older, our bodies become more prone to developing cancer. And when your immune system does start to get suppressed, the number of cancer cells increases. And now you've got more cancer cells for a suppressed immune system to deal with. Cancer is a 12-year process. Tumor formation is in year eight. So we were talking about the emotional emotionality. Now, how, how emotional is a rat? Pretty emotional for most people, right? And that could tend to overshadow maybe other factors, including the fact that trash is piling up all over the place. Well, our our medical community is so focused on the tumor. That's where so much dollars are driving into, and it's, it's really a piece of the puzzle. It is the, um, a symptom of an overall cascade of events. Now, often the treatment for cancer can be worse than the cancer itself. How many people here know personally of someone that has got have, has cancer right now? 
Anybody here that has had anybody they know die of cancer? Chemotherapy or a, a cancer treatment can be successful if the tumor shrinks and the patient dies. Not on their statistics. Not to them. That's a success. They killed some rats. Yeah. But anybody here read the China study? I don't know if that's a must read. What was so profound to me in this book is how they could literally turn on and off the cancer gene with diet, particularly animal proteins. And it, it's a very, it's a very, um, it, it gets you motivated to become a vegetarian with that, with that one. Found that um, all over the, the the world, that the group populations that had higher animal protein consumption had higher incidence of cancer. And what they did is they started to do some studies with some um, some rats or family rats again, volunteer rats, right? Volunteer. And what they did with the volunteer rats is they said they gave them aflatoxin, which is considered the most carcinogenic substance. No man. And we know of another name called Agent Orange. And, and what they did is they gave the um, two groups of rats the aflatoxin. One, they gave a 30% protein diet, which is similar to what we eat here in the United States. And the other one, 5% uh, protein diet. And they found that 100% of the rats with 30% protein died, and 100% of the rats with the 5%, which is like a vegetarian diet, like I, like I mentioned, lived. I mean, it was 100-100. And so what they were also able to found, find is that they could, they could stimulate, turn on this gene, and they could get the cancer started, and then they could revert them back cancer, to a vegetarian diet, and the cancer would go away. Very interesting. The, the protein that they found was the most, it turned the cancer gene on more ferociously than anything else was casein, which is the protein found in milk. Unfortunately. Does it mean that you can't ever eat cheese? No, but it shouldn't be like a, a steeple of your diet if you want to avoid cancer. Yes. Now we're getting to some of the the fun stuff. Some of my favorites.